fiction. Science fiction. Horror. Fantasy. Crime. LGBT. Thriller. You have now entered the House of Mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro. David North Martino, John Copenhaver, and Al Warren. Heard on KCP 106.5 FM Los Angeles, 102.3 FM Riverside, and 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back into the house of mystery. I'm Al Warren. Mr. Joe Goldberg is here. It's lots of action today. It's an action day. Yeah. It's an action spring break, so it's an action day. Yeah, spring break, and it's crazy, and I've been out. Are you excited about the Seattle Left Coast Grime in a couple of weeks? I'm actually ready to go. I've never been there. I'll meet a lot of new people, and yeah. hopefully expecting to learn a lot, get into a new genre. Well, there you go. Escape. Escape. Escape and spinach. Yes. I'm breaking in my new sne- sneakers, you know, because I don't want them to be too white when I get there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Gotta do that. Then, then I'll stick out. So I've been wearing them around, trying to get them scuffed. Up, how how vain. How vain. I, I know. Isn't that bad? I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. Now, speaking of scuffed up sneakers, actually, we, <laughs> which, which has no segue relevance whatsoever. No, but it, it just is something to say, right? People don't really listen. Come on. Um, so we got a uh, great writer, and his uh, book three of the Danny Ryan trilogy is, is out, and it's City in Ruins. And Don Winslow. So thank you for being here, Don. Thanks for having me. I, I just took off my scuffed up sneakers, as a matter of fact. I was helping chase the neighbor's escaped rabbit around. Um, <laughs> Tell me that's a joke. It's not a joke. I, I was leaving the office after one of these interviews on the way to the house, which is, you know, 50 yards away up the dirt road. We live way out in the country here, and this poor little kid is crying, and the, the grandmother's trying to catch a rabbit, and so, um, yeah, so I helped catch the rabbit, and, and my sneakers got all soaked, so that is your segue. I, I, I literally just changed out of them, so. He knew. I knew. The thing is, the kid was crying because grandma was wanted the rabbit for dinner. Right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, that was good in the pot. Right? That is cold. We're not that far out in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's cooking it right now. The rabbit had a name. Come on, guys. <laughs> What? We had to catch. Yeah, it's called yummy. We had to catch Spot. I mean, there's lots of wild rabbits around here, but yeah, it's yeah. crazy. All right. Well, would you do you like going to these shows too? Do you like going to these events and conventions and things like that? Do you find it's a good thing? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, listen, I mean, you have to have time to write, you know, so you can't go to too many of them. But yeah, I usually have a good time. You know, you you it's it's always good to see readers. You run into you know other writers that you know and hang out. So yeah, it's good. Now, I've been to Seattle. I've been to Left Coast Crime. I've never been to Left Coast Crime in Seattle. So there you go. Yeah. Well, you know, it should be good. I mean, it's my own city. Yeah. Uh, is it too vain to have new sneakers and break them in a little bit? So no, you no. I, I think it is. I worry about you. I, you know, I, I yeah. think, yeah, I think maybe something a little older, you know, a little grubbier. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Maybe, I, you know, use flip flops from the, from the pool. No, don't do the no. flip. Don't do no. flip flops. Don't, don't no. do the Crocs either. That's, no, that's, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's no. just sad. Um, no, no. I don't. Do you have any like scuffed up brown leather shoes, like sort of Tom Waitsy kind of stuff? I do, but they, you know, they don't. They're not even enough, and they they cost. <laughs> Back you, and oh, oh, I see. The they heels are shorts. the heels yeah. are not even. They call the shorts. Yeah. yeah. How did you How did you get the heels uneven? You're just walking one way somewhere all the time <laughs> and taking taking in circles Uber back. Yeah. In circles and a <laughs> string in a room, and they right. said always walk counterclockwise. No, actually, you know, uh, years ago, back in the '90s, these shoes are from the '90s when I used to work at Nordstrom Department Store. Okay. And sell stuff, so yeah. they're really old, and I used to wear them down. I guess uh, I was probably standing a lot on the right. oh, inside I'm, of I, my heels with all these, you know, stuck-up people coming in and buying stuff, go. and all right. telling me to do things. There's, you know, there's a, there's a book there. There's a book there. You know, I thought characters, about it. types of shoes. I thought about it, but I know I have some names. These some of them are names, and I think that would be bad but it's interesting it's interesting you still keep the shoes you obviously have some sort of attachment to that era i do actually but actually i I, to to tell the truth i don't think i keep the shoes for the attachment reason i'm just very um 
I hold on to everything, which is really sad. Oh, I got to okay. start throwing away stuff. You yeah. Know? How about yeah. books, though? That's the books oh. are eating my house. You oh. know. Yeah. I, I I lucked out in a way. I had a fire in my house almost seven years ago. Oh exactly. well, lucky you. But, yeah, <laughs> but because it, it smoked out a lot of my books. You know, unfortunately, but at least there was a reason I couldn't keep them around because they couldn't be clean. I did keep the ones I needed to keep, wanted to keep, but a lot of them went. You know, I gave them away because they were just were they smelled like 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 smoke. So yeah. The, the good and the bad. But I asked, I'll ask the question I was second way as to actual writing, which is, you know, and this is sort of a stupid question, which is, what shoes does Danny Ryan wear? What's, what's, what does he wear in Rhode Island versus Las Vegas versus Hollywood? Oh, interesting question. I don't know if they've got that detail level on the wardrobe. Yeah. yeah, you know, probably just work boots in Rhode Island and, oh, I don't know, you know, Hugo Boss or something in Vegas. Who knows? You know, we had a house sitter set our house on fire, actually, which... Oh, really? Yeah. And there was this kid, and then he told me this ridiculous story about how the fire started. And, and I said, you know, when you were in our house, did you happen to notice a book titled California Fire and Life, which is all about arson? I, I wrote that book, so don't tell me this story again. You know, yeah. <laughs> what's his name, Joe? What's his name? <laughs> yeah. Smoke, yeah. smoke and Joe, very good. Smoke and Joe. I was smoking. actually smoking meat, so don't get me started. He was yeah. smoking something else, and <laughs> and tried to tell me that that the, he left a match or something in the liquor cabinet, and that the vodka bottle spontaneously exploded. And yeah. I didn't bother to tell him why that was impossible, but uh, you know. Well, there's another book here coming. Yeah, maybe spontaneous. Combustion. combustion. <laughs> brown <laughs> shoes, bad. brown shoes, and spontaneous combustion. You could right. sing that if you had a tune. Yeah, actually, you could. There's a whole wing of people that would buy that. I I'm sure. That. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell you that. That's never uh, sad about this. Yeah, which yeah. wing is it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can take. Not, a, it's not hard to tell. I can right? take yeah. a left instead of a right. You know. <laughs> well, listen. So, City of Ruins. Yeah. This is it. Book three. So yeah. when you do when you do a, a series with someone like this, um, how do you let go of your character? Well, you know, look, guys, it took me nigh on thirty years to write this book, right? Um, so uh, I think you know I've spent probably more time with Danny Ryan than maybe any other actual person in my life. Uh, but when it was time, it was time, you know. And uh, I, I think that the ending works. And it's what it's supposed to be, and and I, I was ready to let him go. Is Danny yeah. Ryan a good lover? Or? I do. Oh, you'd have yeah. to. Wow, wow. Talk to the Hollywood starlets. Sure. This is yeah. this is this is the interview of different questions. That yeah, you're going to get. this is not like this your, is this is not like the st where do I get my ideas? Um, no. Oh, I'm working towards that. I, so, okay, yeah. yeah, work up to that, would you? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I th I, you listen, I think he is. I, I, I don't snoop around a lot in his bedroom, but, you know, he's, he's, he was, as, as someone there alluded to, uh, the lover of a Hollywood star. So I think, yeah, I think he's probably pretty good. Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Well, let's let's go with the Greek tragedy. You've asked it a million times. It's no secret that this was based on the, you know, the trilogies. And I'm, as I'm reading it, and I'm, I'm going to admit, I've got 100 pages left. I've been reading and writing. and like, oh, man, oh. Don't, don't, don't tell me the end. Don't tell me the oh, end. Oh, I was just about to. Okay, all right. Yeah, never mind. although I've, I know a little bit of the Greek stuff, so maybe piece yeah. those together. Yeah. But so I'm, I'm actually thinking, I'm in the midst of creating my next book. Everybody knows I ask questions to help me. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about you. Yeah. It's all about me. Yeah. So I want I want to be Don Winslow when I grow up. Uh-oh. Yeah. yeah. With hair. So, oh, 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 sorry, oh, sorry. I had oh. to do. I'm the only guy with hair on this phone call. Wow, um, wow. So we're just the way this I is going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm on spring break. I can say whatever I want. I, I'm sorry. The the connection is just getting really <laughs> bad here. Oh, Something the internet yeah. went out. Wow. Yeah. And, he, and he calls me rude. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Wow. Okay, I, I almost never do that, but you know, I, I, he's a good guy. So, uh, but this, this you, would be the hair, the the head of white hair. I'm looking at in the, the screen. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. That that's that came out of Motorola for it like took a about mom. a year to go from yeah. black to white. Okay, uh, when it went fell apart. The uh, so I'm I'm thinking about Daniel Ryan building character. All right, so the, the shoe thing is a, is a joke, haha. -ha, but you, know, you have a, there's a lot. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> but but the question is for me is you've created a, a, a character built upon characters who are you know well known. They have themes and behind them sure 
was, was Danny Ryan a American myth? mythological greek guy in our time the no way he's built no no i don't think so look i mean you know aeneas is a minor player in the iliad and and then goes on to course to be the central player in in the aeneid which was roman uh i liked him because he's sort of an outsider you know he's got one foot in the gang and one foot out and and so he can comment on it so I think he's a he's a Greek slash Roman mythological character, but I was trying really hard, and maybe I failed, I guess, to uh, to make him just a fully contemporary, fully human guy, you know. Well, no, you didn't fail. That's why I was asking the question because you, there's this character that's built. He has he is who he is, right? And he's going yeah. through these trials, and he's in different locations, and he reacts to those locations and those trials in his way yeah and and that's i think that's what makes him such an interesting character is that he's not just the same robot running through he's learning and growing and i'm certain that was intentional as you were building the character out yeah listen you know i always knew this was going to be a trilogy right and i always knew that you know he was it, it fell into three distinct parts one when he's he's fighting in this losing war two when he's a fugitive and you know wandering the, the world trying to find a place to put his feet and three when he builds an empire so i knew that this character was going to have to go from this low level you know mob guy longshoreman slash fisherman up to a guy who's a billionaire you know owning las vegas mega hotels and so with that you know hopefully comes some character development or evolution or something you know at the same time i mean i think in literary terms, you know, every every classical hero has to have a tragic flaw, uh, and Danny's is loyalty, and I think loyalty, you know, forces him or causes him rather to do some questionable, sometimes dumb things. Should writers look to classic works for themes as they're writing their contemporary stuff? Yeah, is that definitely. A good place to start. I think so. Look, I think whether whether we do it consciously or not, it's such a part of our culture, you know. Um, I, I think in my beloved crime genre, and I'm very, very much inside that genre, right? That's where I live. Uh, I, I think that, that we look to our roots in, in too shallow a soil, you know? Uh, we look back to, of course, as we should, you know, to Raymond Chandler and, and, and those guys. And then we look back a little further to, uh, Akon and Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. But really, you know, we should be looking to Dickens, for instance. Uh, I don't know what Oliver Twist is if it isn't a crime novel. Uh, and we should look to Shakespeare. The Godfather is a, is a retelling of Shakespeare's Henry IV. We should look to Don Quixote, you know, one of the first people to write about a criminal underclass. And then, yeah, back to the classics. But whether we sort of consciously know it or not, guys, you know, those classical themes are so imbued into all of our literature and all of our culture that, that we feed off them. And, and don't forget, you have to look at some of the classic books that, that Joe's written. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention those but because they were too obvious. Too, yeah, it was such a slight. But the but the question, and, and I'm glad you asked the answer that because actually, I'll be honest, I'm now ripping off Don Winslow's style from the point of view of I'm building a character out. I'm going, is there a mythological, because I love that stuff as I was in school, that I can build my character on, I can help uh, draw. And I, and I found yeah. almost immediately who was it? A person, Pandora. Well, there you go. And why not? Curiosity. Yeah. yeah. And why not? You know, listen, we haven't invented anything really, have we? You know, once, once the Greeks and Romans finished up, all the themes and, and a lot of the stories are done. You know, some of the plots of these books are taken from Aeschylus's The Oresteia trilogy. You know, I mean, look at the plot. Guy comes home from the war. His wife has a lover. She blames him for their child's death. She and the lover murder him, right? They drown him in the bathtub. Then his son comes home from the war, uh, finds out who did what to his dad, murders his mother and her lover, runs away. Then some ferocious prosecutors relentlessly track him down, bring him back to trial. And in fact, the first trial scene in Western literature. Well, that's a noir story arc. You know, you, you put that in black and white and put a trumpet behind it. You, you've got a 1940s movie. 
you, you, well, now it got quiet there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're both like... we're, we're musing. We're musing. <laughs> Three muses, two muses. <laughs> well, I, I was I was I was uh, lighting my uh, grill on to start cooking some some cooking beef. shoes. Is that yeah. real? Yeah, cooking some old brown shoes. Are you really lighting a grill up? What are you having? No, I was I was just uh, going to barbecue. You know, burn down my house like Joe. Oh, there you I go. I have a couple. You Which know, is, thing... by the way, the per the perfect way if you want to burn your house down. And still get the insurance company to pay for it. Bring yeah. your bring your grill inside, because <laughs> Boy, that's where it ended up when everything blew up. It because ended up inside my house. Stupidity is not excluded in your contract; it's covered. That's right. I mean, they said there was it was uh, not intentional. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, you just say yeah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. They actually had to do an investigation to find out that I was an idiot. Yeah. which is exactly what they but, did. Yeah, yeah, I could tell them. Yeah, I could. <laughs> Anybody can. Thank yeah. you. Stand in no, line. Don. You're welcome. Stand in line. No, no. Yeah. No, no, there's a little payback in these things. You know? Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 From my bald head to your, yeah. <laughs> your <laughs> idiocy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a tight little book. I write that in the <laughs> Yeah. My head, my, there you go. Yeah. My journey across America. Yeah. This is the yeah. unknown book Emp for. Empty heads on top and inside. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> One big hollow One big shell. hollow shell. I, I, the listeners are clicking up now. They are. Well, they, they're all, you know, I could kill yeah. your show, man. I've killed No, other. they're actually oh, enjoying it. No, you're good at killing. Don't yeah, do no, this. serial killer. How, it's, <laughs> that's they're it. enjoying this, actually. They're having a good time. I've, I've killed off lots of people. I mean, and, and you have. And, and, and we know that this is your last book and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. and well, if people know why, they know why. Yeah. But and, and I know you're being asked, is this going to be your last book? And yeah, you know, yeah. How do you, how do you know? Right, I right, know, right. yeah. yeah. But, but you do have inside <laughs> you as a writer that thing. And what's the other way to get that thing to do something so well rather than books? Yeah, listen, I'll probably always write. I'm just not always going to publish. You know, I might just write for myself for fun, you know. Yeah. Well, how about the movie? Is that are you involved in, in that? I'm involved to the, in the extent that I read the scripts and and um, you know I'll probably take them out on location, which I was going to do, and then the strikes hit, you know. But no, they're pretty good about it. You know, typically, I mean, they'll they'll send me the the screenplay or the television script or whatever project it happens to be, and I'll read it and give them notes. A lot of times, I'll sit down with the director or the actors, or you know, haul them around to the actual locations and or the art department people and that kind of thing. But that's the extent of my involvement. I, I might go to the set and say hello, you know, like once. But, you know, a novelist is sort of the vestigial bone on the body cinema. You know, you're the little toe. They, they don't really want you around for, you know, very long. You're the least the most. You're the least most important. The least important person there. Absolutely, but that's but that's real. I mean, you know, truly. I mean, once the screenplay is written and they're shooting, you know, now it's a director's medium. It's really up to the actors, and and you, there's not a lot for you to do except stand around the craft services table and get fat. You know. Yeah, but that's yeah. real. Right. No, I, uh, no, I like. Okay, listen, okay. Put me in the movie business. <laughs> listen, I'm all for free food. We all know free food tastes better, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I wrote a scene about that in the second of these books about these two Rhode Island punks, you know, because I just imagine the guys I grew up with, if you offered them free food, you know, <laughs> I, I was laughing when I was reading that. Yeah. I absolutely was. Yeah, they're like raccoons. I mean, and you're never getting rid of them, you know. Listen, so what's the secret to your dialogue? Like, how do you get it the way it is? That's a really stupid question. No, it's I mean, not. It's a good question. Oh. And because you know, because at first I remember when um, Joe told me to read your books, mm -hmm. like before. Okay. Well, thank you, Joe. I, I, I take it. I, fan. I take I'm it all fan. back. Yeah. And I said, why? And he said, he must be good. He must <laughs> why? be good because he's bald, right? Why? You know, bald. No, no, no be, because of. <laughs> no, and then uh, so then I remember when I started reading the first one of this series, um, or I, listening to because I'm mm -hmm. old and can't see. Yeah, I. Um, I Do you want me to speak up or? Who Who are you? No, you know um, no, actually. And then I went um, after a couple of chapters. I just stopped listening, mm -hmm. and then later I went back to it, and I really liked it the second time. Hmm. But it's it's particularly on how you can express people in the way you write dialogue, if that 
if you understand what I'm saying. I think so. Listen, you know, we've been joking around, but I, I, I don't want to give you a sarcastic answer, you know. Uh, the, the truth of it is, and it sounds a little weird, I, I won't start typing until the characters are talking to me, right? Until, you know, you're out taking that walk and, and Danny just won't shut up or one of the altar boys just won't shut up. And, and when I'm walking, I'm often writing dialogue and, and in my head. And as I do it, I just keep refining it and refining it and refining it. Uh, to the point where then I come back and I, I try to write it down. The other thing I do, uh, is read it out loud to myself. Uh, it won't hear the right notes, but I will hear the wrong notes. Uh, is, is that an answer? Uh, you know, oh, I, I, I wrote it down. You know, <laughs> I wrote it down next to my last, our last interview. And you said something, and I now I've incorporated it because I'm a fan, and That's you're very one nice. of the best in my opinion of all time, without a doubt. But you said you talked about how you Boy. would take. I think, I'm pretty sure it was you. You would take a day off, and you just like re, look at the verbs, just the verbs. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. I still oh, do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because, I mean, in, in our genre, verbs are everything, right? Because we're, you know, at the end of the day, we're an action genre. And, and so I think the verbs get all the work done. And, you know, is it the best one? Is it the most accurate? Am I using an adverb because I haven't used the right verb? You know, could I get rid of that adverb if, if I found a better verb? Is there something in there that would make a sentence more poetic or more rhythmic or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The other weird thing I do is I, I sit back from the screen so that I can, I can't see the actual words, but only the shape of the words on the page. And then I ask myself, does it look like what it is? You know, if it's an action sequence, is it really dense? If it's a scene where I want people, the reader, to contemplate more, have I left enough white space for that, you know? I know it sounds a little no, insane. Well, I, but... I, I just told that story in the car because those are the two things I wrote down. Oh, okay. Like, oh, repeating like, myself, myself to you. Right? No, no, not, for me, I, it validates and it, it reminds me how important it is. I mean, if, if people out there were writing, I, I incorporated it from the moment you said that, and it's like, makes such a difference. But you know, the it other, makes me a better writer. A, a number of I years think. ago, maybe I don't know, fifteen or twenty years ago now, I realized that I was losing my sense of dialogue, um, and I called up a local little theater company, and I, I said, "Can I come do a play as an actor for a couple of months?" Because I I wanted to get back to the, uh, for lack of a better expression, the muscularity of words you know, how they felt and how they sounded and, and how actors were dealing with them and did they feel real or did they feel false. So getting back and doing that, you know, um, doing like a tough two-hour play, you know, four or five nights a week, uh, really helped me get back to, to hoping, you know, to writing what I hope is good dialogue. And and you should explain what verb and adverb is for Joe. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, oh I'm, man. I'm through. Thank you very much. Yeah. Boy, every time it warms up in this room, man, somebody <laughs> somebody chucks in some dry ice, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what's a dictionary? Yeah, what's you know. a dictionary? Yeah. A thesaurus, which is just thesaurus. too many punchlines for the time we have. You know? That's right. <laughs> That's right. So when you're saying you're hearing, you know, you wait till they talk to you. How long yeah. does that take for you to get to know? Uh, it, it, months or sometimes it's taken years. You know, I, I delayed writing a, a book called The Force about the NYPD, you know, because it took years to just really hear those voices. And then when I started writing Danny, uh, you know, I've been living out on the West Coast for the most part. For the last 20 years, although we started go, to go back to Rhode Island uh, to take care of my mom, actually. Uh, and so it took a couple of years uh, of being back in Rhode Island for about five or six months a year to start hearing that dialect, which is really more about rhythms, you know, than it, than it is about pronunciation, because that doesn't really come through on the page. You know, but um, it took me, yeah, quite a while to, to really hear that again and integrate it and also enjoy it, you know, to start liking it again. It's yeah. interesting. Do you ever get worried about, you know, a character not getting full enough or timing and stuff because you're sitting there and it takes months or yeah. even longer? Do you ever get to a point where sometimes you think you're not going to be able to get a story out of that? Yeah, yes. abso absolutely. And, and there are times when that's been the truth, you know, <laughs> when I've just thrown three, four hundred pages away, you know, because I know, you know, 
uh, there was a bad idea or I'm not capable of doing it or, you know, something, there's a fatal flaw in it somewhere and it's never going to work. Um, yeah. So I just, you know, leave it and go on to something else. With this trilogy, I know that I threw away three to four hundred pages of really bad writing. You know, and well, Danny it just wasn't, you know, the, the, the second part. And of course, you know, second acts are famously where stories go to die, right? Um, right. you know, that, that in, in trying to come up with the second book, the second act, I just kept getting it wrong and getting him wrong, you know, um, and it took me a while to, to get my head on straight about that. Let's see what ha- what would happen to me, being the, the nobody, would, is that I would no, just get impatient. All. I would I would I would I want this, I want to get something out. Yeah, let's get this book out. How do you how do you rein in? Because you write lots of different stuff, but how do you rein in impatience? Uh, I I am the most impatient person in the freaking world, right? It, uh, Take it's you on. something I really don't like about myself, among many possible candidates, right? But um, no, that's why this book took me thirty years to write these three books. You know, because I kept putting them away because they sucked, you know. Uh, and I, I was doing stuff that just wasn't working, wasn't working, wasn't working. And then, you know, I'd write a book and, and then I'd think, ah, oh, let's go back to Danny. Let's give it another whirl. And, and then, you know, do, and then some good ideas came, you know, and, and it started to work. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I think impatience, though, can be a virtue. You know, there, there are times when I just want to write something fast, you know, and it's a matter of picking the right scene to, to write fast. I have to ask, um, I, I ask this of a lot of writers, this whole process, and it took you so long, and you put these three books together, and now this is it, that process that you went through, what did you get out of that, and, and how did it change you? And, and the reason I ask is, because now that you're leaving this profession, mm-hmm. you're going to come into you know, doing other things, mm-hmm. how do you replace that, uh, whatever it is that you get from writing? Yeah, I don't know yet. I'm not being coy. I don't know yet. You know, I've been I've been doing, you, you alluded to it a little bit earlier, doing some kind of political stuff, right. uh, which is a very, very different kind of writing, of course. I don't really feel retired yet, guys, to, to tell you the truth, because, you know, I mean, I'm doing this right now, right? You know, and the book is coming out. And although I finished the third book, you know, over a year ago, uh, uh, you know, I've been playing around with other stuff just, just for my own satisfaction. I've been doing some research in some areas, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, so I, I don't have an answer to that yet. We'll find out. Uh, the easy answer, but it's it's also true, is I, I want to take longer walks. I want to catch more waves, you know. But you're going to uh, hear voices when you're walking. I know. I know. I know. I, I did it this morning. You know, I went out and did a few miles, and, you know, they start yapping at you. How do you know it's a voice of a character? I'm so, I, What? Oh. <laughs> that was on the wind blowing through your hair joke. Oh, 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 oh. oh. oh that was a, it was a good try. Stay on theme. Oh, Stick it, was a, it was it was a good effort. Uh, I tried. I yeah, swing no. this. Yeah, yeah. You know, listen. You, you know, one out of three, and you're superstar, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a st- lot of my friends who are who are creative, they have other outlets, like they're painters or they write songs. Mm-hmm. Now, would, would you? Do you have something like that that's not writing related? Because no, <laughs> you're, you're you're about as creative as a rock. Right? That's that's about it, man. I'm I'm really a pretty dull guy, you know. I'm kind of a donkey, you know. I just kind of go to work and you know pull stories along. Uh, I don't have other creative outlets. I really don't. Uh, this is it, you know. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't paint. That's for sure. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm, listen, I, I, I the thought of like me going out now and going, oh, I'm going to do watercolors or something, you know, makes me nauseate to just that kind of thought, you know, that I'm well, going to be glad I can nauseate you. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. Much. No, no. Yeah. It, you know, that's just the, the thought of that terrifies me. I don't want to be that guy, you know. So I don't know. But, you know, but um, I'll keep surfing. I'll keep body surfing, you know, keep hiking, um, do some other things. You know, I, I, I helped sponsor a, a little baseball team in Rhode Island, the Ocean State Waves. Um, they play in July, June and July. It's all college kids from the summers. And uh, so I sponsor stolen bases. So when the home team steals a base, you hear, 
That stolen base was brought to you by Don Winslow's crime novels. And I have this <laughs> satis I it. satisfaction of seeing a couple hundred people look bewildered, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who? Huh? What? Yeah. So that's fun. I do that in the summer. I go to, you know, these little baseball games and stuff. Oh, that's great. It is great. Yeah. You know? Why do hot dogs only taste good at baseball games? It's the same stuff, right? But because it's supposed to taste good. I guess your mind deceiving yourself. It's a. I guess we get back to American mythology, right? But like someone says to me now, you want a hot dog? I go, no, you know. But but like at the baseball game, I really want the hot dog. Why? How did we get on this? Are you guys really unhappy? You had me on the show. I, who, who we're are letting you, you go. go. You're the guest. I don't know. Free just rain. wandering or you want. wandering around. Well, we, we do an interview in a loose way. We want to get to know the person that writes. We yeah. want to get to know the person that creates whatever they do. Ask. And, and that, that's the, I think that's the best way to understand the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. See what you like, what you don't like, what you into, what do you, you know, like what's, what's in it? What's in the a daily day life with Don Winslow? What does he do? Gets up in the morning. <laughs> Gets up in the morning and writes. And writes. <laughs> writes. Uh, you listen, I get up. I, I was up at 4.30 this morning for no reason, you know, uh, but it's just habit. Um, like late in the afternoon, I'll usually listen to jazz for a while. You know, it's it's sort of my my decompression, I guess is the word thing. You know, I'm a big big jazz guy, so I'll do that. No, I'm really pretty dull as you're discovering on this interview. You know, I, I just kind of work. But but look, I mean, I I loved doing it. You know, it was um and it was a long time coming. You know, I, I I've wanted to be a writer since I was six years old, and and the world disagreed with that assessment for you know, the better part of my life. You know, I, I didn't get any kind of success, depending on how you define that, until I was, you know, in my 50s. Well, let, let me ask one question, you know, back to the book thing, on um, last time we asked you, we always asked her, like, is setting as a character, but you know, how did you get to Vegas? How did deep old Vegas come into your book? What kind of, did you go there and and munch around and oh yeah, you know, talk a bunch of old Vegas people. Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Listen, when I was a, a PI, you know, I had a couple of cases there, um, and I got pretty tight with with Metro Las Vegas, you know, PD Sheriff's Office. Uh, so yeah, I did. Because here was the thing, you know, I, I was following the the story arc of the Aeneid, right, and. In the last part of the Aeneid, what Aeneas does is he goes and he, he builds an empire. Well, what would the contemporary equivalent of that be, right? And I, I tried a bunch of different things, and they didn't work. You know, they just weren't good enough. And then, and this is embarrassing, it took me so long to hit on it. I thought, where can you build an empire? And I thought, well, hell, build anything you want in Las Vegas if you have the cash, Right. They did build Rome there, right? Caesar's Palace, and Paris, Venice, a pirate ship, whatever the hell. And so once I hit on that, then it really opened the, the last part of Danny's life up for me. And then, you know, Las Vegas is just, you know, five-hour drive up the road from us. Um, and so, you know, I just go there and, you know, yeah, but I did have a chance to talk to some of those old guys, which was pretty fascinating. They're fun, you know, they're fun. They're still around, you know, not many of them, uh, but they're still around. Well, there's, but there's something in what you said, too, and I have this, which goes back to my impatience connection, is I write something, I kind of like it. I'm mm -hmm. like, what can I do to make that fit as opposed to what I need to have to make my story roll? <laughs> right. 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 Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. So how, oh, yeah. Yeah. So how do, how yeah. do you get a, what did you do? I mean, how does it feel to say, I really like this thing, but I got to, I got to, uh, you got, you got, you, do that. you got to lean away from the catnip, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, ooh, there's the candy, right? But, but I really do need, you know, the vegetables and the steak and all of that, you know, uh, write it and then forget about it, you know, write it, enjoy it get it out of your system and then move on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, it's painful. Or write a short story. You know, I've done that sometimes. I mean, it, 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 like I did a book of novellas, um, not exactly short stories, but novellas, and I did a, a couple of things for Amazon Audible that were ideas that would not sustain a novel, right? The, the sort of thing you're talking about, like, oh, this is really funny, this is really cool. I, mean, I did one about a, uh, a, a chimpanzee who finds a revolver, you know, which is a dumb idea, 
uh, it's one of my favorite sentences I've ever written, though. Nobody knows how the chimp got the revolver, you know. And then I just made up the story from there, you know, about the cop who has to answer the call and all of that. And it was just fun, you know, but it would never sustain a novel. But it was, a, you know, a pretty decent kind of short story novella. I did another one called Crime 101, uh, which was sort of an homage to Steve McQueen. And, uh, and now it's headed for the movies. So you never know. He died a tragic death, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, a tragic childhood, too, you know. It's sad. But, but God, what a great actor. And, yeah. and talk about American mythological characters. I mean, he's the ultimate California cool, isn't he? Right, absolutely. You right. know, there's that T-shirt that's out there, you know, always be yourself unless you can be Batman and be Batman. I, I feel the same way about Steve McQueen, you know. Always be yourself, but if you could be Steve McQueen, be Steve McQueen. Well, there you have it. Which, which prompts another hair joke that you guys did. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> no, that's well. I was thinking about characters playing Danny Ryan, right? And yeah, do you, have, do you have the characters in your head? Is that how you saw him in your head when you were writing him? Oh, you mean Austin? you mean Austin? I never yeah. have an actor's image in my head ever because only bad things can happen, right? Tell me why, because I do that. I do the opposite. Oh, I got to see him. Because, because you end well. Uh, listen, I think you can have your own image of what the guy looks like, but it, but for me, it should not be an actor, because I'll end up writing a bad film treatment instead of a decent novel. Because once you imitate his look, you're going to start imitating his voice and his inflection and all of that, and and it's not going to be any good. Now, I had a, an idea of what Danny looked like, and, and and Austin's pretty close to that. Plus, he's a good guy, right? Like Austin. Uh, yeah. smart guy. He's a down to earth guy. I don't know if you saw, um, Masters of the Air. You know, Fantastic. The, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and I thought he was terrific in that. And obviously Elvis. I haven't seen Dune 2 yet, but I probably will. And, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a good choice for Danny. Does he still sound like Elvis? No, not, not at all. Not at all. Uh, listen, I liked that movie and I, I'm not an Elvis fan. I couldn't care less. Right. You know? Right. Uh, it's, it's never been a thing with me. Right. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm a Springsteen kind of guy. But, um, uh, yeah, but he was great in it. It was a really good film. That's great. It's good if you can. Uh, it, 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 I guess if they take it in a place that you don't necessarily like it to be, mm -hmm. is that OK? No, it's not OK at all. Uh, listen, you know, early, early in my career, I thought it would be OK. I thought I would be that guy who would just cash the check and say goodbye, you know. I mean, Ken Kesey famously said, you know, they asked him if he'd, if he'd watched um, One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest, and he, he said, no, that would be like buying a ticket to watch your daughter being raped. And, and my response was, well, you shouldn't have sold her to a brothel. I thought that until I saw an um, unfortunately bad version of one of my books, and I was shocked at how much it hurt. As my New Orleans grandmother might have said, it hate, it hate. You know, I'm sitting in an audience full of people hating on that movie, and that's a long drive home, boys. You know, so after that, I got more involved, you know, and contractually and all that. You know, I said, I just want a seat at the table. You don't have to agree with me. I, I understand that, that they're two different breeds of cat with, with different needs. Uh, I'm not stupid. A thousand years before you guys were editing, we guys were editing. You know, I, I understand compression and all of that. But if you're going to make serious major changes, uh, I I want to hear the reason why. And if you can convince me, fair enough. Yeah. Ameri What's that? Uh, American fiction. Have you seen that? I haven't. I want to. It's, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just watched it about two days ago. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's yeah, a great, he's a, he's a terrific actor, oh, man. Unbelievable. I, come on, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, Unbelievable. I, I would, you know, it's a cliche, but I would watch him read the, the phone book. It's like Peter Dinklage, I'd watch do anything, right? Jeffrey Wright's great. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. It's, it's, a, a, as a writer, you'll really. Okay, enjoy cool. It. I, yeah. You know, it's just, it's, it's pretty fun. In yeah. That way. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of strange because I know when we had Ann Cleves on, she said that a lot of the shows that have been made from her books, mm -hmm. She has to distance herself with because sometimes the lead actor or actress mm -hmm. takes it. They make it. They, they make that character their own. Yeah. And they take but, it places that she would never go. Right. But listen, you want them to make that character their own, right? 
Otherwise, it's going to stink, right? They, they have to adopt it. They have to have ownership of that character or you're going to get a bad performance. You just are. And so, yeah, it, it might be different from what you've envisioned, but that's something that, that you need to live with. And I have had the experience where I thought that actors made my writing better. You know, or sometimes it happened to me recently, uh, a, a director screenwriter, in fact, doing this crime 101 I alluded to. And I read the script and I went, damn, it's, it's better than my story, you know, because he, he had more time, right? My was a short story and he had, you know, an expansive, you know, feature length screenplay to develop, especially one of the characters more. And he was very nervous about it. He said, Oh my God, did you mind? And I said, No, actually, I, I wish I'd done that. So you yeah, to get down the stairs. Yeah, no, it go, it, but it goes both ways, you know. And there, there, there are things I've done that are, you know, seriously irritated me. I'm not going to give examples. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was starting to ask. I said, "Back up." Uh, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can guess. You know, yeah, yeah but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those three I'm people. A fan, remember? <laughs> yeah, those those people die at the end. You know? <laughs> but, bang uh, bang. Yeah, boom, boom. They're dead. But uh, it, you know, but it cuts both ways. But I, I'm not one of those novelists that looks down on screenwriters or looks down on the filmmaking process. It's extremely difficult, I think, to write a good screenplay and especially a good screen adaptation, uh, and, and to pull it off on film. That's a tough thing to do. So, so who's been your, your, this is a kind of, but who's been your favorite character to write? Oh, well, that's a tough one, you know. I mean, I like Danny a lot. Um, some of the minor characters, though, in, in the books, you know, like the Altar Boys and the Danny Ryan yeah. trilogy. Um, there, there was a um, reporter in a book of mine called The Cartel, uh, and I'm forgetting the name of the character, which is just terrible. Uh, Me too. That... Um, I thought was going to be Pablo Mora. I thought was going to be a really minor character. I, I really sort of invented him as a tool to guide us around uh, Juarez in those years. And I thought, well, a newspaper reporter would be, you know, a good, good person to do that. And then I ended up liking him so much that he became a major character. Uh, Madeline, Danny's mother in this trilogy, I never expected to have as big a role, you know, as she's had. Um, in terms of just like people, maybe if they were real, that I'd like to hang out with or like to know, I, I wrote a book a number of years ago called Frankie Machine, um, The Winter of Frankie yeah. Machine, also headed to the movies, by the way. Yay. Yay. Have you seen um, uh, The Bear in Chicago? Oh, the TV show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chris Storer, who invented, you know, that as the showrunner and writer, that he, uh. he's going to be making a Frankie Machine after Yay. season three of The Bear. And I love The Bear. I was so excited Absolutely. when I found out that Storer wanted to do this. But Frankie, you know, that old guy, I, I just, I don't know, man. I have a soft spot in my heart for him. I think he reminds me of some of the older guys that, you know, used to sort of hang out in the neighborhood where I grew up. You know, those, those you know, 50-ish, 60s Italian guys. And, yeah, I just have a, a fondness. Maybe you might call it nostalgia. Now, listen, so... Um... You're still going to be social media. You're still around yeah. with what you're doing and yeah, yeah. website and everything's the yeah, same. Yeah. And yeah. All that carries on. Absolutely. All that carries on. Cause look, it has to, right? Uh, we're on the brink. I, I mean, I called Trump a fascist in 2015 and people called me an alarmist and a fantasist and, you know, you're way overboard. Uh, and then January 6th happens, right? And an attempted coup, a push, if you will. Uh, I, I wasn't happy to be proven right, by the way. You know, I wish it had gone the other way. But um, now, you know, I mean, it, 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 it boggles my mind that, that a traitor, a traitor, a guy who tried to overthrow the government of the United States is now going to be the Republican candidate for president. You could have written the story. If you, you, you could have written that in fiction. You probably couldn't have sold it. Uh, wouldn't have, right? And so, you know... Um, so look, I'm not a big name, you know, uh, got a certain following. The videos have a huge following, right? It's crazy. It's like 300 million views on those videos, 300 million. Uh, but whatever platform I have, uh, yeah, I, I, I need to, to put into that fight, you know?
it, it doesn't it doesn't interfere with with your with your books and sales and stuff like I, don't I, know. I know I get a lot of negative <laughs> oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah you Tucker think Carlson was oh. me and, oh th- and, was he yeah, yeah well he's good an that's awful a man that's a yeah. badge of honor because he's a total baboon <laughs> you know yeah I mean, that whole coterie of apes um so good for you man yeah i I get a lot of negative stuff like a lot of threats you know uh, but, you know, most of these people are physical as well as moral cowards. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, about the, 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 what we do on social media and the videos, you know, is these guys are bullies, right? They just are. They, they like to pick on people who can't fight back. And, and they're schoolyard bullies, man. They're really tough until someone punches them in the nose. And then the first thing they do, like Tucker Carlson, is go running to teach her. Oh, he was mean to me. He hit me in the nose, you know? And I don't know if you're PG or R or what language I can use here, but, you know, screw them. You know, if it, uh, I'm happy to punch them in the nose, man. I don't mind at all. Well, it takes a while to get that kind of um, emotional strength, because if you're not used to it, uh, it, it surprises you. It, you know what I mean? It takes you back when people, no, I kind people of say some real awful thing. Well, I, when I first started getting it, uh, it was pretty aggressive, and, and yeah. they wanted to, you know, kill me and all Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it, you're just not used to that. At first, you're like, wow, okay, um, yeah. wow. And then they started <laughs> sending me pictures of, uh, you know, guys with their arms up and right. down your buttons. <laughs> oh, <God>. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, but it's, sho- it's shocking. That's all. It just throws yeah. you when you start getting over it. Yeah, I, I'm usually pretty cool about it. I usually don't respond. You know, every once in a while, yeah. I lose my temper. I I sent back a message a few months ago saying, you know, you better brush your tooth and go to bed. Your sister's getting sleepy. <laughs> There's a verbal clutter there. If you go slower, that was actually meant by that. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, just, you know, I just feel like, ah, shove it, you know. I'm, I'm yeah. sick of you. Uh, but, yeah, but, I mean, here's the thing, you know. Uh, one thing that I worry about, sort of generally speaking, our side of this thing is that we want to be so nice, you know, that the people with the, you know, KPBS license plate frames and, you know, driving the Priuses and all that, God bless the liberals, but they just always want to be nice. Well, the other side isn't nice, you know, they're just not, man. And, and we keep bringing spoons to a knife fight. Uh, and I didn't grow up that way, you know, right, uh, right. and, uh, you know, uh, it's, I'll bring a knife to a knife fight. Yeah, but you're doing videos, right? Yeah, we do videos and we do, you know, I do tweets and, and they can be pretty nasty. You know, we, we speak and we, by we in the videos, I mean, my buddy and agent and co-conspirator Shane Salerno and I, we're doing these videos. We, we speak in some pretty, pretty strong, pretty plain, sometimes nasty language. You know, I think one thing we need to do with the Trumps of the world is humiliate them, you know? Um, it, words have power. Words it's, have but power. It's, it, it's so emotionally driven. Um, how do you, how do you get someone? Because what I'm saying is, you can you can say as much truth and give as much evidence as as possible on a subject, but they're so emotional about their charge, they don't care. Well, listen, you, you're never going to change his hardcore, right? Um, as Ron, the comedian Ron White once said, apropos of something else, you can't fix stupid. But there are people on the edges that you can influence. You know, I, I live in a, an area, I'm, I live on an old ranch, um, and I think it voted 75% Republican. Uh, but I had an old rancher call me up the other day, you know, and, and he said, hey, Don, I'm fed up with Trump. I'm done. Great. The other thing I think we do, though, is mobilize the core, you know, is that people who might be sitting on the fence, right, now, you know, we can motivate them, right, to, you know, get off the fence and get out there and vote. It sure changed, but, you know, in the sense of um, how you can run for a political place like being president, I mean, just, you know, in our lifetime, you know, look at the people that uh, – got uh they couldn't even run because of a an affair with someone or something and right. now you've got someone that can be charged and so many things against them and yet 
it's okay. Like it, it just it, it, like <sighs> him, even if it wasn't who he was, if you just take any person mm -hmm. and put them back in the sixties, seventies, eighties, even the nineties, and had had this kind of record of what he's been doing, it just he just would have never survived. So it should I, have been over right. when he mocked that disabled reporter. Right. And, that should have been enough. I don't, I don't understand how far I don't we've either. come. Like, yeah. we've changed so much as a society that yeah. this is okay. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I, I, that's, that's the hard fight. Right. I, I teach social media, and, it's, and I, I can oh, track yeah. the, the, decline, uh, the, hmm. the decline of that and the increase of us-them yeah. uh, with the growth of social media. Yeah. That, uh, it, this instantaneous. Yeah. Depressing. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I... I Clausewitz, you know, once said you should fight a battle on the ground of your own choosing. Well, great if you have that choice, but you don't always have that choice. And and I think we have to fight the battle where the battle is, and that's on social media these days. Yeah. Well, there we go. Well, we, well now uh, we're depressed. Um, well, now we're going to wrap it up with something good. <laughs> Get okay. your copy of book. It's book three of the trilogy of the Danny Ryan trilogy and it's city in ruins a novel by don winslow who's been our guest so thank you for being here don thank you for having me guys it's been a lot of fun i've really enjoyed it so thank you thank you, you very much yeah really really fun so you guys be well uh and let's we'll do our best. let's work on that shoe choice you know. this has been a production of the house of mystery radio show to find out more about our show guests or hosts Go to our website at houseofmysteryradio.com.